everybody, I'm Tom Vazel. I'm Chris Yee. And today we're taking a look at a game you did not know existed. It's called OT Fantasy Draft. Oh, I knew it existed. Well, that's true. Uh, not until I told you about it, though. That is true, also. <laughs> um, so this is a game from Funhill Games, um, and the designer of this game has done other games. In fact, I, one I like a lot called Detective Disciple. Uh, this one is based on characters from the Old Testament and the Bible, and is very similar, the designer even says this, to Fantasy Realms. Yeah, and it's readily apparent. Yes. There's some differences, and we'll talk about those in a bit. But also, it includes biblical characters, and as most of us know, if you've ever tried to play a game based on the Bible, you know that it's there's like a 99.5% chance it's terrible. Yeah. I might be underselling that. <laughs> Um, but this is the first themed game of Old Testament characters playing American football. Got to go out there and, and, and just and smash them and split the uprights and uh, go all the way. I don't believe there w ever has been a game with this theme, and likely this is the last. Unless they come out with NT Fantasy NT, Draft. NT, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the Maccabees expansion. Judas plays on the other team or oh, something, geez. I don't know. Anyway, here's how it plays. There are five different kinds of cards in the game. Location, leaders, regular, profit, and things. At the beginning of the game, everyone's going to get two secret cards. You're going to pick one. I'll be like, hmm, do I want Deborah, who's a woman and doubles the points of all draft women? Or Babylon, which destroys the wall and temple, but ten for each garden or Daniel. Eh, I'll take Deborah. So I put Deborah face down, the other one's discarded. And then you start. One person's the starting player, and that person is going to take a card from here, and put it face up in front of them. So maybe I'll take Adam. That card is replaced. The next person takes Saul. The next person takes the wall. Then it comes back to me. Once everyone has gone, we don't refill it. We just discard all these cards here. And we will draw five new cards in the line here. And the starting player passes too. So you don't get to be the same person is going to go first. You're going to keep going until everybody has seven cards so there's gonna be seven rounds and then you're going to have eight cards the seven cards that you took over the course of the game plus your secret card which you then reveal you then will score based on all the cards that you have so let's say these are the eight cards which would not be good because i took deborah who doubles the total points of all drafted women and i took no other women but she is worth two points so there's that and the score sheet allows you to score each card separately on it but like, so the river gives me two points. Total points of all food is doubled and five for each boat and fish. Well, I didn't get boat or fish and the goat here is food. So I will double the points of that one. Now this one says can be destroyed and placed on our card. Now here's my biggest problem with this deck here, folks, is I took the desert 70, but it's minus 10 for every other card in your team, plus 10 for each famine or snake. I didn't get Famine or Snake, so this one here is 70 minus 10 for each other card, so this one's just zero. That's nothing. Some cards will destroy other cards. So, for example, if I had taken Babylon, it says destroys the wall or the temple, and I also had the wall, then destroying basically gets rid of the card. Destroying means that card's not going to give me any points or anything. Anyway, you're just going to do this, add up all the points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. I do want to show you some of the cards in the deck, just so you know what is in here. Eve, she's 10 for each pair of starting points. Um, so the starting points here, so if there's pairs, she'll give you that, but she's minus 10 for fruit. Fire is 18 points, but destroys all locations. Joshua adds a six card to the draft line in his turns. He gets rid of a wall, though, and if he does that, he gets 20 extra points. Jonah protects against fire and famine, so fire and famine, which would destroy people. Jonah stops that and gives six for boat, fish, or sea. Pharaoh gives seven for dream, grain, or Joseph. Ruth is five for each grain, and once per game you can take a leftover card from the draft line. And then there's lots and lots of other cards in here. You'll notice that the motif here is everyone is in a football game, as we mentioned. There they are, high five in each other, Elisha the prophet. And there you go, that's what's in the game. So, <laughs> Let's talk thematically wise. Some people might think some people are not going to be interested in a the biblical theme. I don't see why that really matters that much. Um, but 
some people might be bothered by biblical football. It it borders irreverence without ever crossing the line, I think. I agree. I don't think it's irreverent pretty much at all, actually. Right. Unless you it bothers you to see Saul stiff arming David or whatever it is. You know <laughs> I think that's my favorite card. Yeah, there's there's some really the locations, they're like, oh here's the Nile River. Bam! Right across the fifty yard line. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one part about the art I don't like is that they put every single location on a football field. I feel like they – I get yeah. it. It's on a football field. I don't know. But I'm amused by the theme, but also the theme doesn't matter at all. In this game, you're just collecting points. But I will say the theme does matter point-wise, and I enjoyed that. I think that you can tell th – and this definitely is what kind of um, pushes me over the edge of thinking that this is done from a place of, of – uh, respect and appreciation, even not knowing the the designer's other games, I think you could look at this and say, well, it's, this isn't mockery. It's not making fun of it because right. it's very well thought out. Uh, who wants to combo with who? Who doesn't combo with who? Who will, um, what is the, is the term, blank or erase? You know, yeah, this one is destroy. Destroy, right. you're right. Uh, it's clearly all thought out, clearly all very thematic. At the high level, this game is not thematic draft your favorite people from the old testament yes you or know. least favorite people for that matter yeah but at the at the individual card level it's very thematic and it helps make the scoring sensible now they like we said there's a very popular game called fantasy realms and people were like this is ripping off fantasy realms well it's using a lot of the same mechanisms the big difference here is in fantasy realms you start with seven cards and you are rearranging them a bit until the game ends here you start with one card, which is kept secret, which I like, but the rest is open and you're just drafting from five cards. That's it. It actually makes this easier to teach and play. I think so. Because that opening hand in Fantasy Realms or other games that may or may not also be very, you know, very similar to Fantasy Realms, you look at your opening hand and you say, okay, this, this, but not that. You know, you have all that information overload right at the beginning. And this this has the same amount of information per card, but it's more digestible because you only have the one. Right, like, so in my example, I say, oh, Deborah doubles the points of women. Well, if I see a woman, I'll think, well, then I should take them. And then when I get that person, I think you're adding to the complexity. Now, the only part of this that I do worry about with new people is sometimes the scoring can feel a little wonky. Okay, this destroys that, but this protects this. And even if you say, I'm gonna score one card at a time, you still need to know that some of those effects are in play. Yeah. I almost wish there was, like, some protect tokens in it. Okay. That you could put on a card to say this card is protected. I don't know, maybe. Um, but I I enjoyed this. You know the game it re actually reminds me of most is Marvel Remix. Yeah, yeah, I just played that recently. Which is a variant of Fantasy Realms. But the point values in here are pretty similar. It does a few things that I haven't seen before that I liked. One is for matching pairs of uh -huh. numbers. You get a bonus. Or one is like for every different number. Yeah. Stuff like that I found to be fun variants. And I like the theme mix on top of that. Yeah, I think overall this is really well done. I mean, you, uh, I did a whole video series on a, a game of biblically themed games where almost every one of them was either awful or a blatant ripoff. Right. And this one, I like I said, it avoids the blatant ripoff thing. I think that it is more approachable of a, it's almost like a Fantasy Realms variant, but it is still different enough, that idea of drawing up cards. Right. Not being able to switch them out at all. So, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the card scoring, obviously very similar, but I, I think it does differentiate itself. Yeah, I'm going to give this one a 7.5. I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, I could even see it going higher than that. I enjoyed it a lot. I think the theme is fun. When I played it with my kids, they got kind of into it. They're like, oh, yeah, obviously David beats Goliath. Obviously Daniel beats the Lions, but Goliath beats other guys. It just, it made sense, and it was entertaining, the pictures and stuff, but also the game itself was fun. Uh, to be fair, everybody beats the Lions. Ho-ho! Football reference. The Detroit Lions are I know what the Detroit Lions squadron. are. They also play on Thanksgiving Day. See, I'm not totally <laughs> non... Anyway. <laughs> I think they're actually having a good season. I have no idea. Anyway, I'm also giving this one a 7.5. I think mean, this is neat. It is... Uh, <laughs> it makes me chuckle. You know, yes. there's, there's games where um, 
you, you you get the humor the first time through, and then, then the second, third time you play it, you're like, well, the humor's pretty much gone at this point. But I think it's just fun. At some point, you're gonna say, oh yeah, I haven't I haven't gotten this character before who wants animals. Well, maybe I'll get that snake. You know, I've never got the snake before because usually the snake bites Adam, which I don't want, but I don't have Adam right. this time. I, I still chuckle at it the more that I play it. I think it has a uh, um, it, it has a, a neat little solo mode where you're just kind of playing for a, a good score, and uh, the all of the different rankings of the solo mode are very punny. So obviously, I have to approve of that part. I'm they're the worst puns I've seen in a long time. Oh my gosh! Well, I shall I shall read some to you. What was Boaz before he got married? Ruthless. Judah man. <laughs> I'm Reuben for you. That one doesn't even make any sense. No. Giddy on the right track. Pharaoh play. Ho hum nahum. Okay, I like that one. Who's Sidon? You. Okay, stop. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's Old Testament fantasy or OT fantasy draft. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Gee. Have fun with football or something. Storm! <laughs> <laughs>